Good day everyone. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Grand Tuhon Supremo, Leo T. Gahe Jojo, the Supreme Grandmaster of Piquitir Sakali System. You are watching FMAPulse.com. Well, Piquitir Sakali is a uh, system that has been there, uh, existed in a lot of number of years. It was uh, organized by my grandfather and uh, founded in 1897. This uh, system has been with the generation and generation of my forefathers for several hundred years before uh, the revolution. It was a continuing bloodline of our family that the system has been established. And during the uh, civil war in the Philippines, uh, fighting against the Spaniards, the technology has been improved uh, more and more that the specialization of the system is called Piquete Tertia, meaning close quarter combat. This is a system that has been kept by our forefathers uh, with secrecy. And uh, it so happened that I was the only grandson because my, grand my mother was the only daughter. And uh, when we migrated to uh, Negros in, before the war, and I was born in uh, Albay Bicol, uh, far away from the north of the Philippines in 1938. I was uh, uh, with my grandfather and my grandmother. So when they took care of me, the, my grandfather was very particular that I have to inherit the system. That I will be the one to absorb the system and be able to preserve it. But with the one instruction that they said, uh, I teach you not to teach, but I teach you uh, to protect the family and to protect uh, the property. So I keep that and uh, for the many years that I was in the Philippines until I was in the university, I keep the system. I never taught anybody. It's only in the time that I migrated to the United States in 1972 that I was able to open this up in New York City in 1997. I decided to open this up in uh, the United States because when I saw the different martial arts are existing, were existing in New York City, and there was no Filipino uh, martial arts, so I decided that this should come out. With the purpose that uh, there will be no question as far as the Filipino martial arts being taught by other people in the name of Arnes and Scrima. So I made my way to see to it that the system has to be taught in its purity. And we start with one student, two students, three students, and later on I have a number of students and uh, was accepted by the Filipino, uh, by the martial arts community in New York because the biggest uh, population of martial arts during those early days were in the East Coast and the Midwest. So when I presented this to the uh, law enforcement and it was accepted by the New York Police Department to give the opportunity to, for them to uh, study and analyze the system and they accepted, accepted it because they say that it's effective but the problem was that I was not very familiar with the terminology and using the law enforcement terminology uh, in representation. So it was uh, accepted, but they say that it was expensive. But I didn't do that. I didn't continue that, but I went to you know, Texas and I was able to establish mm -hmm. our training center in Big Spring, Texas. And uh, we were able to have a, the first convention in Texas, in the, actually in the United States, we had more than 40 students supported by the Texas Oil Association and also with the, with the Big Spring, Texas uh, municipality. The growth, the growth of Piggy Tertia was very uh, acceptable and it was a, a privilege that the uh, majority of the martial arts all over the United States have recognized my presence as an added martial arts among the martial arts industry. So it was then a uh, opportunity that we were able to break down the system to the most effective way using the full contact sparring, using also the training with the police on uh, entry point defensive tactics and also on the entry point tactical combat for military. Gotcha. Now, in terms of speed, well, there is a big difference. Uh, first of all, uh, the system of my uh, educating the students is based on the purity of the system. Uh, starting from the philosophy, 
starting from the cultural values, starting from the uh, customs and traditions, and down to the ideology. Philosophy was very important because without the philosophy, then the purpose of your training will not be very effective. As it was in the past, the foundation of discipline is based on the philosophy. Philosophy in general, meaning the belief of our forefathers, based on Kali philosophy, is to believe in life, not to believe in death. Secondly, to believe in success, not to believe in failures. And thirdly, to believe in good health, not to believe in sickness. So these are the three qualifications of, on how the Pikitersha became a, found a system and it is founded with that strength of the philosophy. So the important thing is that when the philosophy is a part of your training, then it becomes your lifestyle. You are very observant and you are very careful and you are very determined. Well, I started in 50 k when I was six years old. And that was the requirement because after the war, you know, uh, my grandfather with my grandmother is part of uh, Nigros Kudendal. He has to deal with me in terms of training because, you know, he, he believes that the system must have to be moved to another generation. And I'm the one that was present there because I'm the only grandson. So the training that I had when I was six years old was very tedious because I have been awakened up every five o'clock in the morning and have to stand on the table and the, my grandfather say footwork and if I get mistaken with my steps, you know, he hit me, he beat me and uh, that reminds me that I have to do it right. So that discipline was a continuing uh, training for me, right? And when I was at nine years old, that's the only time I have uh, to, be, to be trained in terms of using the sticks and the knives and all of these things. So from six, seven, eight, you know, it's all footwork, footwork strategy. The PTK is easier to learn if I'm the one to teach. But if somebody is teaching, of course he has to learn the technique. But if he's teaching like my style, then easy to learn. Because PTK means patay <laughs> kapare. People talk about Kali. That's PTK. So it's easy for everybody to learn because PTK is people is learning to learn Kali. You know? So another thing is that PTK is power to kill. So who not understand that? Huh? That's the meaning of PTK. So if I teach you you have the power to kill, you don't like to learn? You learn easily because you'll be afraid of me, you know that? <laughs> so it's important that everybody will have to understand that PTK is a system. A system that has its uh, cultural values. It has been studied all over and over and over again. And every technique uh, that had been uh, filtered by my far grandfather has been put into laboratory. In that laboratory, uh, is tested against the Spaniards. And when the Spaniards are killed by that technique, then they preserve the technique. That is what PTK. PTK is a collection of effective technique because it was tested against the Spaniards, against the Americans, and against the Japanese. That's why you have to learn because it is a very precious system. Tested. Would you like to have something that is not tested? Huh? You know, I cannot say it open to everybody. Because our motto in the system is the few, the proud, the leaders. I don't individualize in selecting people. Everybody is welcome because that is a culture. I want them to learn our true Filipino culture because it has been proven that this culture has been effective. And that shows us that Filipinos have a character of uh, giving. We share what we have in knowledge because I want them also to be saved. When you learn Pikitersia, you save your life. You learn how to save your life and you learn how to protect your life. That is the good thing about this. It's not a sports. Because the system has its own ingredients of saving life. You are talking about a weapon uh, that you use. Not the empty hands, the weapon. The life like this. Uh, the blade, 
the sticks or anything that you take hold of your hand is a weapon. Learning Pikitresya uh, has so many advantages. It requires a dedication with discipline. You have to be baptized uh, with the blood of your uh, sacrifices. In training, you will be uh, experiencing some blades because of some blood that will be tested by this blade. Uh, many had been bleeding, and that's the only way. That means you are already uh, tested. So, Piketersia is a system that is really uh, dedicated to make person more proficient and more disciplined and more effective. That's why you have to learn. No, you know, I believe in quality. What I've been teaching is a quality teaching. See? And I have seen in New York shooting during the time on how martial arts is taught the karate, the judo, aikido. What I'm teaching, I'm the only one teaching in there, uh, the truth of what is a weaponry. By using the sticks. Sticks only, but that the stick is only a representation of the blade. But the culture is a blade culture. So, as far as attraction is concerned, as far as interest is concerned, right, it took me time to generate some people that would like to learn. And I believe that since the system is a quality system, it will attract people. And those people that have been attracted are also masters of their own uh, system, like the grandmasters of uh, Ninjicho, like the masters of uh, Shorinru, like uh, the Taekwondo Richard Chan, uh, Henry Wong, uh, Moses Powell in New York. Yeah? And all of these big time people, yeah? they recognize the importance of the Filipino fighting system because they knew that when the real situation calls for do or die, weapon is used as like the Jewish Defense League versus the uh, Black Panther in Pennsylvania. They have encountered several times in all weapons, there was no kicking and punching. So the Jewish Karate Federation accepted that uh, Piketersia will be part of the training of the uh, Jewish Karate Federation. And because of that, Alex Steinberg, who is the uh, yeah, master of uh, the Jewish Karate Federation, gave us in, in, in gratitude, he, hold, he held a very important event in Playboy International where there were 15 grandmasters uh, with more than 10,000 people who saw our uh, presentation and our uh, exhibition also with the other martial arts. So we were able to gain respect and admiration from the different martial arts because of its quality. The quality with reality. That's why this, this distinguishes us from the rent on martial arts. We proved the ancient way of uh, fighting in terms of cultural values. We show also to the entire martial arts community that it is also uh, a cultural art, where we have also the Filipino dances and all of kind of, of uh, presentation in relation to the uh, fighting uh, technique that is presented to the public. So what is developed here is the ability to respond. I have no reason to change. Number one, why should I have to change when the, I know that the system has been proven effective? Why will I, 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 I mix my system and misinterpret it in different way? Although my grandfather was dead, but he will be mad at me and then he's gonna kick my ass. You know, there's no reason for you to change. You must be stupid to change the teachings huh, by your forefathers knowingly that it is a perfect science. Why? Because I saw him fighting every week against other people there and he smashed these people. During those early days, there is a testing everybody, you know. If you are a grandmaster or you are in this very different system, some people will come to you. Oh, what is your style? Oh, yeah, alpha. Uh, still, it's fine. There's no way for you to change. Like what happened now, right? Arnis and Screamer, they use some mix mix and then they use the blocking system. And they used to say that uh, the boxing with a stick. Can you do that? Huh? You do that with, 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 with my blade. You can, you can disarm me or you can use that thing that uh, disarming. That's why that alone huh, is a destruction of the culture. 
Thus, they would like to see to it that the Filipino fighting team is not that. That is not. Because we are a blade culture. We grow with a blade. When it was a, a tradition that every Filipino uh, that walk in the street, male Filipino, she have a blade on his, on his side. Because the longer the blade, the lower is the rank. The shorter the blade, the higher is the rank. So why you have to change? So if you have to look into the actual situations of uh, assault, most trouble that occurs in the street or occurs anywhere, there is always a weapon. It's not the kicking and punching. In the bar, the guy used a uh, empty uh, bottle, glove bottle. He broke that and he used that against you. Or anything that he can take hold, it, he used this weapon. So, if you are weapon oriented, you will be able uh, to uh, control and be able to, shall we say, remove the weapon from the hand with somebody because you understand the art of weaponry. So, there is no comparison as far as survival is concerned and the reality of fighting more than what is the weaponry is all about. Knife, the sticks, anything. Uh, it represents dangerous tools. A ball pen, I can remove your eyes. This, I could slit your throat a thousand times. So, what is your education and learning from other things? Until the time that you realize that what is it. So, if you realize that the blade is sharp, you have to be sharp also in your thinking. That you don't change it. If you change, then something's wrong, then you will be blamed for that. Because you are, uh, you have a wrong judgment. We deal with exact science. This is what is different between the other fighting system compared to Picketersia. The higher technology of Picketersia goes into what they call exact science, where they use of mathematics and combat geometry. Right now we are in the stage of combat geometry. Okay. This is now the stage that we brought everyone into the higher learning because it has to be effective. And in the combat geometry, there is no probability that a person uh, will have to question because within three seconds we destroy you. If the people understand the art of weapon, especially the blade, they should respect the blade. Look now how many uh, organizations in other martials are demanding that they will be taught also by Piquita Tertia. Because they knew that in many occasions and many experiences in their life or life, people's, uh, other people's lives who had been attacked Home invasion, for example. Somebody goes to your house with a baseball bat and try to break the, glass, the tables and everything and take your TV. Weaponry. When you're assaulted in the street, they are always using huh, either blade or gun. But if you are trained in weaponry, especially in the blade, you are more than alert and you are getting away from the danger of a gun and danger of a knife or anything, anything for that matter. So Piketty Tertia is centered on security consciousness. Other things can be done, but security consciousness has an important role in your discipline. That's why discipline is the key. And if you are doing things with discipline, you cannot change it anymore because your muscle memory has been already locked in into that system of perfection. When you change that, you are insecure. For example, if I trust you, instead of trusting you, I take this knife away and if I punch you. So what happened? The guy has a knife, then he kills you. Why? Because you change your mind. You are fighting with me with the knife to knife and then because I think that I will go to jail then I punch you instead of that, punching this knife to you. We cannot afford to commit a mistake. The mistake here is a blunder. So we are trying to really plant into the minds of those who are learning uh, the martial arts today. That out of their background in other martial arts, that is only your background but that is not your fighting system. Because the energy that you deliver during the actual combat with kicking and punching, it's not the same when you are taking hold of this knife. When I have this knife, I will eat you. Huh? I will skin you alive. I will take your eyes out and I, everything that you have. Okay? Because I believe in life, I don't believe in death. That's the impact of this philosophy. When you fight with me, I see to it that I will be successful. You fight with me, I see to it that I could last. You, we, we fight in January and I kill you in December. That's how long, because I have the endurance stamina. The truth is, our discipline, has been established with purity and with effectivity. That's why the Piketersia has been accepted by the military. Because of its effectivity. Because the war is not done by kicking and punching. The war is gun and blade. 
punching and kicking probably when the guy is dead then he punches he kick, kick the guy that's the time that he kick, kick the guy right but in actuality you cannot even kick so when a guy has a 45 you kick the 45 huh? or you could kick the nine millimeter or you kick the rifle impossible so the truth must have to come out that when you teach this system and you teach something for people to be saved from danger is to go into their reality that is what the Filipino fighting system is for. And it is a reality because it has been tested all over and over again. The only system that is present today, that is in is at war every minute of the day, every hour of the day, every day of the year is Piketty Tertia. Because in the unfortunate Philippines, this is the extension of discipline of the unfortunate Philippines. Like for example, the uh, airborne training or the combat scuba training or the snipering. Those are extended education. And Piketersia there as the edge impact weapon, uh, tactical combat under the Astakam Asian Pacific Tactical Command. We are uh, training them as an extended discipline together with the armed forces of India. So today is a dangerous time for everybody because the rise of terror, the rise of criminality, the rise of drug infestation, infestation induce people to kill. What do they do? They shoot you or knife you. So our entry into the martial arts world uh, has a distinction as a unique system because we brought out the true Filipino uh, identity of the real life of how a fighter, a, a real warrior ka, can protect himself and how can he fight with the enemy ka, with the do or die attitude. So, if you sum it up, what is the qualification of a warrior? A warrior must be intelligent. If you are not intelligent, you die. Because one goes with this. If you have the courage and bravery, you have to analyze the enemy. When I look at you, I analyze you. I observe your move. I observe your aggressiveness. I don't just like to collide with you like you are doing the judicial and you collide with each other. Like you are fighting blindly. No. I analyze you. So every step that you make, every move that you move your hand, I already analyze you. Geometrically, uh, I solve the problem. So our system is based on geometrical equation. Exact science. From geometry to physics. When I throw you and lock you in down the ground and give you a vertical throw that is physics leverage and control so in the long process of training you will be able to adopt a kind of character different from the other martial arts we don't consider ourselves as matter of fact as a martial artist we are a cultured uh, fighting person we are warriors by heart where did we get that warriorship? We get that from our forefathers our forefathers and forefathers there were warriors although they are dead but their spirit is alive and when you love this knife, you have the spirit of your forefathers. But if you don't love this knife and you don't want this knife because you're afraid of it, then you belong to the beauty parlor. See? That's the difference. So in our case, we know how to distinguish a person from the other person. And that character must be realistic. So I encourage those who are practicing the Filipino system that they should be truly uh, educated and understand the true meaning of what is a Filipino culture. And you cannot afford to mix that. Mix it with some other martial arts is a huh, condemnable sin. Because huh, your forefathers will condemn you for doing things not right. So as you go along in this study, as far as the Filipino fighting system, it has to be dedicated with huh, a full uh, devotion and uh, determination. The edge weapon technology or the blade weapon technology has been there for a long, long time. Long even before the Roman Empire or the Spartans or uh, it started by the Visigoths and Ostrogoths during the early times of Jesus Christ. So the blade has its role in history and it has uh, moved the hearts of people and moved also generations of dynasties, empires and kingdoms to a new nation because the assault or the invasion of other nation went out after 200 years. They will be invaded again, invaded by the barbarians, by the Visigoths, by the, by the Hans, uh, all these kind of people, even today. How about us? We are not doing anything to protect ourselves. Then what happened? Then you are at the mercy of those people who are trained how to kill because your only survival is equalization against them. Uh, people who will uh, assault you and take your life. So the discipline and survival is very important. The Piketty Tertia will continue to grow and it is highly in demand. Uh, for the people to join, they may join, but they would not last because their bloodline is not 100%. Once they get the, they get the pain, they, they quit. 
Once they get the bleed, the, the bleeding, then they quit. Why? Because they are not 100% warrior. This is what we experience. So our motto is the few. If we are 1 million, we are still the few. If we are 10, that is still the few. But we are able to get 100% pure warrior's blood. 100%. So you as a, uh, you know, as a Piketty Tertia man, you understand where you belong. Because your bloodline is there, or else you would not be able to admire and have this knife to be your first love that never dies. And you carry this knife, then that is an indication that you are a true Filipino. <laughs> that is it. You know? There's no other way to change that. Yeah. Because if you have that continuity of blood burning from your grandfather's blood, then you are the true generation of your forefathers. You are the true representative of what he, are, he was. The same with me. I am the representative of my grandfather. I bring the message the way as it was. How effective it was, how effective it is, that is the message. This knife kills there, now it will kill now. It will not be left in the corner, idle. So when I bring this, uh, this waiting for the enemy. Because I will not allow this to stay in the corner or to be thrown there. That is the mission of this knife, to protect you against the enemy that you don't know and you don't see. And that enemy will come anytime. And you tell him, I've waited for you for a long time. My work is to educate people. I have to deliver the correct message. I have to teach the right procedure and the right system. Kali is the only word that can be authenticated as a true Filipino culture, a true Filipino fighting system. Number one, when you practice Kali, you practice the philosophy. What do you practice? Number one, you believe in life. Number two, you believe in success. Number three, you believe in good health. If any of these three you practice, you are a Kali man. In the early times, the history of Kali was uh, influenced by the Sri Vijaya Empire. For 800 years, the Sri Vijaya Empire was present. Borneo, Burma, Siam, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, down to Cambodia and Laos. There was that Malay race, meaning brown race. And this brown race, uh, their, their uh, doctrine is the doctrine of discipline under the principles of Kali philosophy. So when Kali was brought to the Philippines, it becomes a philosophy. But to the Indian, it is a goddess of violence and destruction. So, the goddess of violence and destruction, which was presented as a philosophy among the Malay race, the Kali became symbolic. But the practices is indicated by respecting Kali. Because the Kali uh, goddess will kill you if you don't respect her. So, as a person that adopts the philosophy of Kali, it is indicated in his practices that he is respectful. That's why if you believe in life, you believe in life. I, you respect me, I respect you. That is the result. And everything that we do, it has to be successful. No failure. So Kali was transformed into a defensive mechanism using the blade as uh, a tool of respect. You respect my blade, you res I respect your blade. So the presence of the blade became a protective mechanism. So Kali can be also authenticated in terms of practices. The language, the language of the Filipinos, which is the Babayan, uh, when you are writing the Babayan, it has a manifestation of the artistry of the words by either Arabic, other Chinese, or other. So in other words, the Babayan has a language itself interpreted in several languages. So, Kali, as a uh, philosophy, is shown in the way how the people move. For example, uh, this slashing. This slashing, which is uh, commonly under that practice of continuity, is the figure of eight. Okay? The figure of eight. Eight uh, is also a part of the belief of practicing the eighth number is means eternity, continuity of motion. So when you use the word Kali, 
addressing somebody uh, as Ka Jonah, Ka Juan, Ka Pedro. That is, Sir, Your Honor, Your Majesty. So every day is being practiced. Ka Libutan, meaning description of the word. So, a Ka is a prefix. Kalibutan, kalirungan, kalisod. Kalisod means sadness. Kalirungan means knowledge. So there are so many kas uh, and every word that is used as a prefix under the Kali uh, influence. Kali uh, is a word that is silently said during the time of the Spaniards because the Spaniards do not like to hear the word Kali. To them it's a curse. Okay? So Kali, uh, practice as a blade culture, has a spiritual meaning. Uh, as you move the blade, it goes with the uh, formation. As a vertical line, as a diagonal line, as a circular line, and all of this. So nobody understands that. But in the practice of the Kali people, they use the numbering system. Uh, I practice one, I practice two with the blade, I practice three, I practice four, up to ten, up to zero. So you do not know what I'm doing, but I'm doing a figure of numbers. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, five, six, right? And alphabets, A, 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 B, K, D, in Tagalog, and Filipino language, A, meaning triangle, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, up to 26 alphabets. You see? That's Kali. Right? It has its practices through the alphabets or the abacada of the Filipinos and also the numbering. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 8. So if I use A plus 1, that's vertical line. Uh, that's vertical, that triangle, A, and then you go to vertical, that's 1. And that's 2. So you 1 and 2, that's 12. 1 and 3. Okay? So you are cutting that, nah, see? so these are the things that are secretly hidden uh, in the action as done during the time we'll be fighting you. In other words, there is no uh, segment that it is broken, it is continuous. So Kali has its own superiority because it has some references under the Sri Vijaya Empire. And we were the recipient of that, including Indonesia and Malaysia, and also Siam, which is Thailand. So the Malay race has its rule in the way how Kali became a part of the civilization of the Malay race, which has been uh, a part of the whole history of the uh, Great Asia. Because after the Sri Vijayan power, the, the Muslim uh, took over for 800 years. So these are the histories. But the Philippines is one of the countries and within the Asians that had really uh, be a recipient of the Kali doctrine because they, they adopted it as a philosophy. So the work of that philosophy was proven against the Spaniards, against the Americans, against the Japanese. 303 years we won against the Japanese, the, um, the Spaniards. They gave up the Philippines, sold us to the Americans in the Treaty of Paris of 1893 at $3 per head. Meaning, uh, the Spaniards sold the Filipinos to the Americans, not the land, not the Philippines, the people, three dollars per head in the Treaty of Paris of 1889. Why did they sell? Why did they sell the? Uh, why did they sell the Filipinos to the Americans? Because they know that they are losing their people here in the Philippines. In the locos, all, uh, lots of priests there were killed by the Filipinos because they, they, the Filipinos uh, had been cheated by the priests, so they killed them all. That's the thing that demoralizes the Spanish government. Sell them to the Americans. When the Americans know that we are already released by the Spaniards, they came to the Philippines with the condition to claim the country of the Filipinos. But when the Filipinos saw that they are the same color, we fought against the Spaniards, or the Americans. Or they are pretending to be somebody, but that is Spanish. So we fought against the Spaniards, against the Americans rather. What did they use? They used the 38 revolver and Kroger rifle. That was the time when the gunpowder was used against the Filipinos. But we fought with them against our own huh, blade culture. So they lost and then they developed a 45 caliber against this 
against the Filipinos, against the 45 caliber. Americans were losing. They gave us the Commonwealth. Okay? To hide themselves that they were not defeated by the Filipinos. And then when we were claimed by the Americans, the Americans, uh, the, when Japanese came to the Philippines, we fought against the, Jap the, the, the Japanese. The Japanese won against the Americans, killed General, uh, General Wayne Wright, surrendered. And uh, we were together with the uh, Americans, with the entire force of 20,000 Filipinos and Americans in the Philippines. But the Japanese came in 1941-1942. What happened? 200,000 Japanese against 20,000, right? The Filipinos and the Americans lost, but the Filipinos uh, did not surrender. They went to the mountain, hide in the cave, and they start uh, sharpening their bolos. So we fought for two years against the Japanese. The Japanese were losing their people. They got out from the Philippines, and they were met by General MacArthur in the Battle of the Philippines. So three major wars were fought against the Americans, against the foreigners. Spain, America, and Spain, Japanese. The only country in Asia had fought with three big nations. You cannot find that history uh, with Malaysia or Indonesia or, or Singapore or any country in Asia that fought three big nations and defeated them. So what you are learning here, huh, the Kali culture has been tested and proven. So when you use Kali, will be effective. So meaning to say, will you be effective against somebody who has a weapon or will you be effective against the blade? Uh, productions uh, like uh, Fight Quest and uh, you know other you know BBC. This is a presentation to the whole community, to the public, that once we were existing there, and when we present that with reality, the way how the ceremony and how the way we train, how uh, serious that we are working into the mechanics of making the person more uh, proficient in his training. That indicates that in the training alone, we have superiority. Because why? We train with blade, we train with live blade. We train with, we train with sticks and we do a full contact. When we do a full contact sparring, we are trying to test the skill of this individual to show that what he learned must have to come out in reality. And for how many years we had been doing sparring without him gear, well, nobody has been hurt. Because why? They are counter-offensive. But if you are only defensive, then you will be hammered in the head, you will be damaged in the legs, and then, you know, you are not a fighter by that time. You are a, a, a shall we say, state, you are being hit by somebody, because why? The training is not good, because you are going to block, and you are going to this, 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 you know? Right? When we deliver the stake, we deliver at 300 pounds per second. Okay? So your job is to get out from it, and find an opening to enter, and be able to counter with me. So what it requires? It requires a lot of intelligence. That's why you are in PKT, you are not going to last if you are good or if you are trained in a section one, uh, grade one, section 44. You know, you have to be upgraded with high quality of, of learning. You have to be yeah, disciplined uh, intellectually, physically, and spiritually. So as far as the other uh, media of information, like the History Channel. Obviously, this will help the people to understand that there is such a fighting system that has been there for a long time and, and it was represented by the Philippines. But it could not be called Screaming Arnis because Screaming Arnis is Spanish name. So when you adopt a name in different language, you must also explain that this come from Spain or come from Portugal or come from uh, uh, what kind of Spanish country there. If you are presenting French, then you have to tell that this is a French uh, technology, right? Because you are you are teaching the French uh, fencing or uh, English uh, saber or whatever it is, but you don't use the saber of this English to be a Filipino. But Kali has its own uh, blade that is or that was blessed by our forefathers, and it has been tested against the major wars. We show how we train people into the hard way. Because what you train is what you do in actual combat. If you are trained in the hard way, you can survive in actual combat. But if you are trained lousy, then you die. 
Simple as that. That's why our training is hard. Hard but effective. To me, is uh, an accomplishment. But to those who learn, is an achievement. Meaning to say, as far as I'm concerned, I don't take pride that, you know, I do this, I do this, I do this. I'm just happy that people have dedicated themselves in learning. And it's our, our duty to share. So, achievement? Yes. Pride? No. Caring? Yes. We care for people. Right? We share with people. And we are concerned with people. Because that is a form of government. By the people, by the people, and of the people. So, since we are the people, then we share with the people. So, as far as PTK is concerned, we lead the way for others to follow. So, when you are training PTK, your, the result of your training is people will fear you. Because fear is the best weapon. And you, don't, uh, you are not afraid of people, regardless of who they are. Because you know that you can't take care of them. Because of your superiority, of your knowledge, your skill, and everything that is needed uh, to win. Because you have the strongest philosophy, you believe in life, you believe in success, and you believe in good health. All right, so uh, for those who are listening, and those are maybe, I have not mentioned anything more than what I said, but uh, take whatever you hear from me. I am the Grand Supremo of the Picketeria system. And I will take responsibility of those who question. Because this ans these questions I have answered. And then I explain because we are on the ground right now. Proving that our system is uh, effective. Tested all over and over and over again. And it costs lots of lives to perfect one technique. That is an evidence. You want to see the record? Join me. So don't question. Just listen. Thank you, my friends. All right? Good luck.